the law has, has some things to say. This is, is the um, Universal Declaration of, of Human Rights, Article 12. Um, and this is the basis, of course, for the uh, European Convention on Human Rights, for the, for the um, various other conventions on human rights that, that exist around the world, for lots of treaty obligations. So there are about 20 or 30 different treaties that actually contain essentially the same words. It is universally accepted that there is a legal commitment, a legal requirement to preserve people's privacy. But people say, yes, but you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. And I, I want to explain just briefly why that's, that's unthinking, it's ignorant, and it's callous, and it's wrong. People should not say that, and yet politicians do it whenever they're trying to explain that it's quite all right that they've got access to your personal data or that they're giving it to somebody else. Most, most of us actually do choose to control our privacy. We, we draw curtains. Um, we would feel, even though we've got a tracking device in our pockets, we'd feel pretty uncomfortable about having streaming video in, in our bedrooms or in the bathroom. Uh, and, and when people are found installing video cameras in, into private places, they quite rightly get prosecuted for breach of privacy and, and people feel violated. There is a human sense in which privacy is at the root of human dignity. This is, this is liberty and, and, and privacy.org's view of, of, um, of the role of privacy in society. It is, it is very important to, to maintain human dignity and the right relations between people. That's all of us. But there's a, a significant number of people who, who are seriously at risk if their privacy is violated. And I've listed just, just a few of them. Um, people who, who've suffered serious trauma in the past can be deeply, deeply undermined if, if the, the details of, of the fact that they were, were raped or abused as a child becomes public knowledge or, or known to their colleagues at work. E even you know, people who've got a diagnosis of a serious illness may not wish to share it with casual acquaintances or, or work colleagues. It may be something they feel is very private to themselves. People who are escaping abusive relationships may be at serious threat if their location is, is revealed to the abuser, who, who may be working very hard to try to track them down. Um, there's a lot of discrimination in the world. Things that are, that are nobody's fault, characteristics, uh, mental illnesses that people may have suffered cause people to discriminate against them if this becomes widely known. There have been a, a number of cases where people's HIV status has caused them to, to lose their jobs, for example, quite unnecessarily and wrongly. And, and HIV status is a specially protected characteristic under the law. It, it, it is regarded as extremely private. Uh, people adopting children. Um, children are taken into care because they have been abused almost always. And the birth families, the relations of, of the original birth parents, quite often feel very badly about the fact that the children have been, been taken into care and then adopted and try to tr track them down and, and may even attempt uh, to kidnap them. And, and therefore, it's very important to adoptive parents to be able to maintain privacy and, and to maintain secrecy of, of their identity when they choose to do so, and for as long as they choose to do so. There's a lot of serious risks. Social workers, prison officers, undercover workers in the security industry, lots of people whose jobs uh, either require them or give them the ability to uh, actually project a, a different identity. And, and it's important that that isn't violated because they may be at serious risk. So just before you tag somebody's photograph on social media, just, just think about the risk you may be exposing them and, and their family to at some point, either now or in the future. And, and just make sure you really want to do that. <laughs>